A lot of 2020 talking heads debate whether the battle of 2020 is in Iowa, New Hampshire, or any of these other early states. But one place increasingly influenced the political landscape is, of course, college campuses. And many of those college students are putting their votes in Senator Bernie Sanders' hands. The new College Pulse Chegg election trackers show Sanders leading at 35 percent. Senator Elizabeth Warren comes in at 26 percent. She is followed then by Andrew Yang at 10 percent, who is beating out Joe Biden's 9 percent. Here to dive into the results and give his thoughts on how Wednesday's debate might impact ballot casting is College Pulse co-founder and CEO and friend of the show, Taryn Klein. Great to see you, sir. Great to see you, too. Good to see you, Taryn. All right, tell us what are, what are the trends in this latest um, tracker? What are, What's the movement? Yeah, definitely a lot to talk about here. So for some context into the tracker, College Pulse, we are a research analytics firm focused on college students. We have a panel of a quarter million students from 900 universities in all 50 states. And in March, we teamed up with Chegg, student learning platform, to build the first ever student election tracker, where we're offering an in-depth guide into how the race for the Democratic nomination is shaping up amongst an overlooked but crucial, as you mentioned earlier, population, college students. And yeah, we've been seeing a lot of changes since we began the tracker in March. As you mentioned, right now, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are in a league of their own, um, trending at 35% Bernie Sanders and 26% Elizabeth Warren, and then followed by Yang, Biden, and Buttigieg. Um, Bernie, we've seen, re has rebounded nicely since October um, when, his, uh, when, when he had a heart attack. And um, he's actually at the highest support levels we've ever seen since, um, since beginning the tracker in March. Yeah, well, that's interesting, Taryn, because that basically tracks with national polling, is that, you know, around the October front, he had a dip in the polls, basically nationwide, not just amongst college students, and he's basically bumped up ever since to that 35 percent level. Have you all, what other growth have you seen? I, I believe Andrew Yang, I mean, he's increased quite a bit of support. It's not just, you know, amongst national college students. Also, as I understand it, I think in New Hampshire as well, in the under-29 demographic, one of the latest polls we were looking at, he actually leads the field in the under-29 demographic there. Very very interesting. Right, yeah. I mean, when we started this tracker in March, we saw Andrew Yang polling at 1% or 2%, and now he's climbed up to 10%. He has hit a little bit of a ceiling, we've noticed. He hasn't, he's hasn't. he been hovering around 10% since September. Um, but that is notably higher than what, I mean, it's notable to, it's, it's important to note that that is higher than the um, than Joe Biden and right. um, Pete Buttigieg and other candidates that are, are higher than him in, in among the national population. Mm -hmm. and do you have a sense of, I mean, look, the knock on young people is always, oh, that's great, but they're not going to show up and vote. Do you have a sense of, of how enthusiastic this demographic is about actually coming out and voting? Yeah, I mean, that's, um, that's, that's an often repeated trope around college students is that Hey, great! They're not gonna. They, they might. They might think a certain candidate. They might be supportive of a certain candidate, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because they're not gonna vote. Um, but the data really just doesn't support that. I mean, first off, we're talking about a demographic of 20 million U.S. citizens, and that is. Um, and when you look at in terms of voter turnout, you can see that from the midterm elections in 2014 to 2018, the largest increase actually in in voter turnout came from this population, and so. We, when you look at the sheer quantity, they're important to take into account. But also, when you look at the trends in voter turnout, we it suggests that they're going to be very important in this upcoming election, especially in these battleground states that we're talking about. In New Hampshire, there are more psychology majors at University of New Hampshire than the number of voters that had separated the general election in 2016. Hmm. In Pennsylvania, another state that you know, just last week, Siena and New York Times poll suggests is going to be very competitive. We, there's 150 colleges and universities. So to overlook college students as not as an unimportant demographic in this population in this in this uh, upcoming election would would be a mistake and likely cause us to be very surprised when the actual votes come in. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Another thing we don't talk about as much with you, Taryn, uh, is about Trump, Donald Trump and his support on campuses. What what are you seeing there in terms on the Republican side? Yeah, so thank you for bringing that up. Okay. I mean, we have, as I mentioned, 20 million college students, but it's important to note that 60% are, are self-identified Democrats, 10% independents, and 30% Republicans. So that we're talking about 8 million college students that are don't identify as, as Democrats. Mm -hmm. So when you look at when you look at the overall, when you look at Trump versus generic Democrat. 
we have seen pretty consistently since March has not really changed at all that 70% of Democratic college students would vote um, would vote for the Democratic candidate no matter no, sorry uh, sorry 70% of all college students would vote for the Democratic candidate no matter what and then 20 to 20% of college students would vote for Donald Trump and 9% say they would not vote. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. So yeah. So, yeah. So the levels of support for Donald Trump has has remained around 20% among college students pretty consistently through March, since yeah. March. So here's another um, college student trope we can have you uh, dispel. Uh, the other thing I hear is they just support Bernie Sanders because he wants to give them free college and cancel the student debt. So what are the top issues that, that you see for students? Not that that's unimportant, but is that sort of the monolithic reason that he has so much support? Yeah, I mean, so the student loan debt is obviously a crucial issue to college students, but actually the number one issue when presented with all possible issues that college students say is most important to them in determining their vote, it's actually the environment. An overwhelming um, college, amount of college students say the environment over any other issue. So it's 33% of college students say, say, say the, the environment. So candidates that speak to those issues actually have a better in chance of influencing college students than these other issues that come up as you know the most important. Not to say healthcare, income inequality, you know, um, student loan debts, those are not important issues. In fact, those rank as the second or fourth. But when it comes to influencing college students, the environment is really the issue that is most compelling. Yeah, really interesting. All right, Very Taryn, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Coming up, a new poll dives into who's on top in the early primary and caucus states. It even digs into a projected delegate count. And one candidate is on the rise in both Iowa and New Hampshire. We're going to talk about all of that when Rising continues.